Welcome to Dave's Tech Table. In this series, we'll discover the new workflows for 3D stereoscopic editing in Premiere Pro CS5. Adobe's teamed up with Cineform in their award-winning Neo 3D plugin. This new 64-bit plugin for CS5 is absolutely amazing. It offers full 3D stereoscopic editing in Premiere Pro's preview monitor. Just slip on your favorite 3D glasses and just start editing. It's absolutely incredible. Imagine sitting down in front of your computer while you're editing, watching all the action coming right at you. It's pretty amazing. And if you've been doing 3D editing for a while and 3D is not really thrilling you right now, you really just want to get down and learn about the different workflows in the editing, this 45-minute series should give you a lot of great tips. But for those of you that are just getting started, there's a lot of little pieces that you need to be aware of. So we're gonna go ahead and talk a little bit about equipment before we get into the workflow. A couple things that you need to consider. Take a look at the list I'll put up here, and these are the types of things that you wanna sort of have on your shopping list before you get started with 3D editing. Okay, this is just a quick list, but these are some things that you wanna think about. First of all, are you a hobbyist or a pro? Can you shoot with just a pair of cameras, which I'll show you in a minute, or are you gonna have a special 3D rig? Who's the audience that you're shooting for? Where will it be viewed? Is it gonna be for television, maybe just internet, or just standard computer playback where you just wanna be able to view your work in 3D? What type of rig will you use? You've gotta have a way to mount these cameras, hold them either on a tripod or in some sort of handheld rig, something like an ICANN rig or a Red Rock micro rig, but you're gonna need something to mount these cameras. Speaking of cameras, what type of cameras are you gonna use? You know, obviously you need at least two, so I'll show you a couple of examples that you can think about, as well as some professional rigs. Let's jump right in and take a look at a couple of rigs that I put together myself. Now, one of the first rigs I put together, just really to start understanding what it takes to shoot 3D and what some of the issues are, were these two flip cameras. And as you see, I've gone ahead because I learned pretty quick and I've labeled one of these right and one of these left because at all times you have to keep track of which camera's right and which camera's left. And as you see, I have these mounted on a simple ICANN mount. 90% uh, of the time you're gonna wanna shoot with these things on a tripod, really any dual camera setup you're gonna wanna use on a tripod. Lots of weird things can happen when you start moving these things around because the sensors really just aren't geared up for that. But it gets a pretty interesting result when you shoot 3D, and it's a great way to get started just to learn it, especially if you're going to download the trial versions, really just to get sort of some fun out of this and figure out how this works. One of the next rigs I worked on, and one I still use a lot today, is this Canon rig that I have two identical ABC HD cameras. I've shot some pretty amazing video with this. And um, it does have its limitations, so I should tell you. First of all, you have to make sure that you take each of the SD cards in here and label one left and one right, because it's pretty easy to get the SD cards mixed up. I've done it a few times, and your 3D result, uh, pretty easy to tell when, you, when you've done that. But a couple things you want to worry about. Uh, you want to worry about having each of these cameras in exactly the same mode. Start with a default mode, maybe 1920, 1080 at 30p, and you want to go ahead and make sure your zoom levels are set all the way out. But when you shoot this way, and you see I've actually got them mounted on another ICANN rig trying to mimic the space between my eyes. Now again, this is still a little far out. It's as close as I could get these cameras together, so that is part of the limitation. So I just don't really shoot anything that close. I shoot things from about eight feet on out and it actually is a pretty good result and the pictures are amazing. So I highly recommend starting with a rig uh, like this and each of these ABC HD cameras are under $500 a piece and it's a great way to get started. Now I will tell you I was talking to my friends at a GoPro video. Uh, if you remember the GoPro cameras, they have these little cameras like this and they've actually got a rig coming out pretty soon. Here's a look at their prototype over here and as you can see it's really nothing more than two of their HD cameras put together. So there's going to be a lot of these rigs out there. Now for those of you guys that are um, 
shooting a lot of DSLR video, you guys can play in the 3D game too. Just go find another friend that happens to have a Canon 5D, for example, or another camera exactly like yours, and go ahead and shoot video. Obviously, we've got these two cameras set as close as we can together, and the lenses are still pretty far apart. So you're going to want to make sure that you're shooting your video far enough back. Now, all of these cameras have a very similar problem. Let me go back to my original rig here. Now, when I'm trying to shoot with this, and again, typically on a tripod, I have to try to start and hit these two start buttons at the same time, or you might want to go ahead and use a remote. Well, the issue there is you, trying to get these things lined up is really, uh, you'll drive yourself nuts. So you have to go back to the basics and just get your, yourself a slate like this one. This is a typical ICANN slate. And when I push the buttons on the camera, I'll typically just come out here and just go ahead and take a mark and I'm all set or you can clap your hands. Sometimes you can use a visual cue if there's a lot of things going on in your scene, but it's a lot easier just to go ahead and use a slate like that. So I highly recommend it, especially on rigs like this that you've made yourself. Now, what's happening on the professional side? Well, I have had the opportunity to team up with Panasonic on a brand new camera that they've been working on. Uh, it's amazing. It's the AG3D-A1, and I've been shooting uh, downtown Annapolis with this camera for a couple of weeks now, and I am totally sold on it. It is a lot of fun to shoot with. In principle, it's pretty much the same as these other cameras, meaning that you've got two SD cards in the back, one left, one right. You still need to label those. But what differs with this camera is you can actually zoom right in and out because you're guaranteed that you can go ahead and get to those left eye and right eye information at the same rate. With these cameras that I just showed you, you really can't zoom because you can't guarantee that you can go ahead and get that follow through. So the pro cameras out there are really designed for that. Some other things that they've done with this camera, which is totally amazing, and again, the, the quality is pristine. There's actually a convergence button over here, and that has to do with how, how close your subject is to your camera and how far your eyes need to be apart, if you will. These two lenses need to be apart in order to create the best 3D effect. And they've come up with a mix mode where you just hit the button on the camera and you can turn the dial here, uh, which also doubles as your iris dial. So you go ahead and turn this dial here and you superimpose both of those images. And what's really nice is it also works as you're looking through here. So you don't always have to depend on the LCD. And they have done a great job with this camera. I think this camera is coming out pretty soon and I think it's going to be one of the leading cameras out there, especially in the broadcast industry where I've been getting a lot of questions on broadcast television users that are gearing up for 3D, you know, how to shoot these commercials and stuff. So this is really the first rig I've seen where you can just pick it up, go out and shoot, and you really don't have to think about anything. You can just point and shoot. Uh, obviously on a tripod you get an amazing um, result, but packed with the features. So go head over to their website and check out the AG3D1. I think you'll be highly impressed. And I've got some really cool workflows for this camera. I can't wait to show you because there are some specific things coming out for this camera in the Adobe Cineform workflow where it's really going to make this a breeze to use. So let's take a look at a couple other things that are going to be important and that is the types of glasses. Let me go ahead and give you uh, another slide over here to talk about the different types of glasses. 